Hi, everyone. How are you? This is Dr. Japaro. I'm here at the Social Work Exam Prep Bootcamp, and I'm bringing you some practice questions today. I hope everyone's doing well. And let's get started. I'm going to be going over some questions that I chose. We did some of these in class. We have weekly classes, in case you're wondering. Uh, really quick, this is my um, contact information, my email, and also our, our website. And my name is Dr. Chaparro. I'm the co-founder of Social Work Exam Prep Bootcamp. This is our 17th year of licensing social workers nationwide. So let's get down to it. We're going to do a few questions, and I'm going to try to continue to do these practice questions at least uh, one or two times a week. So just keep out, keep your eye out for my videos. All right. Now, I focus pretty much on ethical questions for this video. And if you want, you can stop the video and try to do these questions before I review them. And if not, you could just do them along with me. So if you want, pause it now. And then when you're done with these two, press play again. All right. Now, also the way I'm gonna be doing this, I'm gonna really show you how to break down the questions. That's something that we actually are um, experts in and that's uh, why we've helped so many social workers pass their exam. Now, um, I'm also gonna show you how to highlight the questions, all right? Because on the exam, you can actually uh, highlight things as you read the question. So that's very important to kind of practice that beforehand, right? All right, so I'm gonna be reading this slowly, right? But your goal is to do, when you're taking the exam, one minute per question, when you're practicing it, actually, so that you could gain that speed and momentum when you're actually taking the real test. So a school social worker, so so far that's uh, who you are, right? Uh, works under a supervisor who adheres to a different code of ethics. Okay, so that's what's happening so far. The supervisor asks the social worker to perform an action that violates the social worker's professional code of ethics. The social worker should. All right, so let's start um let's let's start highlighting this. So here you're a school social worker, so you could kind of say like, "All right, well, this is who I am," right? Hold on, sorry. And then you can maybe highlight this word different because that, that's like a like an adjective. It's kind of showing you like, okay, something's going on here, right? And then we're gonna look at this main sentence here because this is the stem of your question, all right? Now, we wanna make sure that uh, this question, this sentence here is highlighted because your answer is going to match and reflect this sentence, all right? Now, always don't forget your last sentence. Now, I don't wanna highlight the whole thing, but this is for you just to keep in mind. Now, this, the last sentence is gonna tell you what to do, all right? So don't forget, the last sentence is going to tell you what to do. So in this case, my last sentence is telling me the social worker should. And when you see should, and I'm gonna put some little notes here, I'll put it in like a different color um, font. When you see should, think of first, or basically the here and now, okay? Because they really wanna know what are you gonna do first, or else if not, they would let you know what they want you to do. So always think first, meaning the here and now. First means here and now, like the most immediate, answer, right? So basically, I have to figure out what do I do first if someone's asking me to perform an action that violates my own code of ethics, all right? what What's my first thing to do? Now, once you kind of figure that all out, then you want to look at your answers. So your answer, you could read your answers. A is follow the new uh, soups, the soap supervisor's code of ethics, right? The one that you're working under. You're going to ask to be reassigned to a different social uh, supervisor. 
And the last one choice is base the decision on the social work ethic ethical standard of practice. Now, if you notice there's only three choices here because on the exam starting January, 2023, and I and I actually explained this in my uh, previous uh, boot camp video, um, those changes. So if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. I posted it like about like two weeks ago, all right? Um, so there's three choices here, meaning that you wanna kind of get rid of one first just to get that out of the way. Now, if they're asking me to immediately do something um, that by that um, an action that would violate my um, code of ethics, it would be A, right? Because I would not follow something that violates my code of ethics, all right? So this would be out, okay? And also on the exam, guess what? You can actually cross out also on the real, you know, ASWB exam. So this, you know, this is what it's going to look like. You can't write notes like this. But these are just my notes for you, right? So, you know, you're mainly focusing on this sentence because you really want it to match your answer, right? So now between B and C, which is the most immediate thing you would do? You would follow your own code of, code of ethics. So your, your, any decisions you make or anything that people ask you to form, perform that violates your code of ethics, you wouldn't do that. You would follow and base your decisions on your own, well, which would be our own ethical standard of practice. Now, let's see, why wouldn't it be B, right? So let's maybe, let's say you chose B and you're like kind of confused. Why wouldn't it be B? Uh, B, because then it's, this would be like a do nothing. You know, those kind of answers are like do nothings, right? Why would it be a do nothing? Because you haven't addressed the problem. You haven't addressed the issue. If you just ask to be reassigned, you haven't addressed any problems here. The, the fact that they're, you're asking to be by, um, taking an action that violates your code of ethics, by being reassigned, you haven't addressed that this main stem sentence, all right? So make sure, uh, so this is how you break everything down and make sure that you match it. So let's make sure that we're matching it. Does this, uh, will this solve the issue of someone asking you to violate your code of ethics? Yes, because you're gonna base your decision on your code of ethics. And that's it. So the answer here is C, all right? So I'll pretend that you know I'm on the test and I'm choosing C. And then you would move on, all right? So let's move on to the next one. Two, a social worker, that's you, faces a conflict, that's like maybe like a strong word, right? between two ethical principles. All right, so we got two ethical principles here that point uh, to different solutions, right? So let's put a word here that's missing. So that, so you're trying to like figure out what to do here. What should the social worker do first, which means immediate. Again, the immediate answer, the here and now answer is first. So in this case, I can, if you want to, you don't have to, but you could highlight this sentence, right? Because it's the main sentence that you're going to focus on. Now, if there's a conflict between two principles, um, what do I do first to try to figure out uh, what to do, right? Now, there's three choices again here, and let me eliminate one. So, you know, you're reading all your choices, analyze each principle, determine the client's choice. You know, you're reading all this stuff, use a problem solving model. And now let's eliminate um, one. Now, I'm going to eliminate B, and I'll tell you why. First of all, they didn't even mention that the client is involved, right? Now, and this is something also that I stressed in my video two weeks ago, follow what the words in the question. If the words are not there, that's you adding info, that's you overanalyzing and overthinking, which, which happens. It's not an easy thing to just like get rid of from one day to the next. So something you have to work on. So let's get rid of B. Even though it's a first and it sounds like an immediate thing, but we haven't spoken about a client. We're just talking about an ethical principle and what to choose, right? And a conflict. Good. So if I'm between A and C, what can I do immediately first and the here and now to help me figure out what is what um 
what to do here with this conflict between two ethical principles. So is it gonna be analyze each principle or use the problem solving model? So just looking at the words, right? Can you see more words leaning towards one of the answers? Are there more words that you could match and find in the question that would go with your answer, right? So those are things that you wanna ask yourself because you could say, hey, I see an answer here <laughs> between A and C that really matches with my problem sentence, with which matches with the words that, that this sentence is giving me. And the answer is A, all right? I'm gonna choose A, oops, sorry. But then I'm gonna show you why it's A. Here, I'll just do it like this. Why is it A? Because each principle, and they talk about two principles, right? Analyze, I do first also, because I'm doing an assessment. I'm trying to assess like what is going on with these principles. Now, why wouldn't I use C? Well, to begin with, let's say you didn't know, but now you know, problem solving model is more related to a theoretical approach, like how um, to help a client with their problems, right? So again, this is not about the client's problems. This is actually about a social worker facing a conflict with these principles. So this would not, C would not be the answer. It wouldn't fit here. And uh, so the answer is A. All right, great. I hope you guys are getting this correct. So let's do um, three. I have a few questions here for you guys today. So if you want to do this on your own, you could pause it. And then if not, uh, do it with me. But if not, pause it right now or you'll start hearing how to do it. And then when you're done, press play again and you can hear how I break it down. All right. This question I chose because I get a lot of, um, you know, my current students and the classes and stuff. They, they tend to ask this question even this last week uh, or two. I got a few people asking this same uh, question, like something where it's a similar question pretty much the same thing. So I wanted to show this question in case it helps someone out there that uh, ever gets this type of question, all right? So I'm gonna read it and I'm gonna break it down. And also try to follow the way I'm breaking it down to see if it really, if it matches how I'm breaking it down. All right, a social worker, that's you, employed at a hospital in patient unit, all right? That makes a difference because you, you see the setting that you're in, right? Hospital inpatient unit. Interviews, so you're interviewing. There's a difference between interviewing and therapy, right? Therapy means that you've seen the client and they're already in therapy. So that's a difference between I'm um, just doing an interview with this client. All right, so you're interviewing this client and he's involuntary. All right. So involuntary. All right, fine. Let's see if it's it's an important part of the question. Okay. And it is because it says being held due to suicidal risk. So this would be considered like a red flag. All right. Because if it's a red flag, then it's 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 an important part of the answer. Okay. Even if it's all the way up here, it's the first word. It doesn't matter. If there's a red flag, you you have to just be careful with that. It's going to help you get the answer, in other words. The client has a history of alcohol abuse. Okay, they're already they're telling you that too. The client, uh, which is like a, a symptom diagnosis type thing. The client is depressed, so here's a, a symptom. And asks that the social worker assist him with an outpatient placement. All right. The social worker should first, and then we're going to think here and now and immediate. But what is immediate, right? Uh, we're looking at this, and I'm going to highlight a few because I mean, you might be doing that on the test, so I want to follow what you might be doing, right? Um, I'm looking at this client that's depressed and wants to be out. I also have a red flag, right? So what's more important, the red flag or what he's saying? is safety, right? So that's just to keep in mind. So first and here and now, right? So we're reading all the choices. Remind the client that the hospital hospitalization is not voluntary. Assist the client in efforts to be discharged. Educate the client regarding complications due to alcohol abuse or speak to the medical staff. Now, 
with in this case, so the other ones that we saw, uh, we saw like three choices, right? This question has four choices. So what do we do with four choices? We want to eliminate two answers. So let me get rid of, speak to the medical staff, because why? You're in a hospital, but is the question anywhere in the question? Do they talk about medical staff? No. I mean, they say you're in a hospital, but they're not part of the question to begin with, especially they're not part of this highlighted uh, sentence, right? So that's out. Um, let's also take this. Even though they did mention he has a history, so history doesn't mean it's happening now. So it's been there for a while, right? And also speaking about his complications of alcohol abuse, is that going to answer the here and now situation that he wants to pretty much leave, right? It doesn't go. So your job is to really match, see what goes with the question, see what goes with they're asking, okay? Um, and then we're between A and B. Now your job is, okay, which one goes with this stem, but also keeping in mind about the suicidal risk, which is your safety factor here. Now, the answer here is A. You might be like, oh, wow. And hopefully you get it right. And I'm just going to highlight, I'm going to like bold this. Now, why would it be A if he wants to leave? Because of the suicidal risk, right? And he is involuntary and he's inpatient and he's being held literally due to this suicidal risk. So it's not in his best interest. It's not in his safety of the client for you to assist him in being discharged, right? Um, so B won't be the answer. It doesn't match with the keywords or the factors here that there's a suicidal risk, but this will, and you could talk to him and remind him the reason why he's there. Okay. And that's the answer for that one. All right, let's move on. All right. We got two more here. Okay. So, you know, press pause if you want to do them and then press play when you're done, but I'm going to continue. Uh, a social worker, again, that's you, who treats a 10-year-old, so they're telling you it's a minor, okay, male child, uh, suspects, so here I'm going to, even though you can't do this on the test, but, you know, mentally you can, <laughs> uh, when you see the suspects, again, here's another red flag, uh, you want to follow these red flags, okay, they put these red flags in there for a reason. So you want to follow them along to your answer, all right? That the mother is physically abusive. And here's another red flag. So you, they're giving you two red flags and they're kind of telling you like, guess what? You better follow these red flags. But of course, you know, they might throw you a, uh, like dissuade you. So you could be like, hmm, maybe it's not that answer but you're going to follow red flags because I'm teaching you, right? All right. The social worker is concerned if he reports the suspicion, the child would no longer trust him. Now, this is pretty much like the stem of the question, but just like the other, the question before this, number three, when you see these little red flags pop up, you want to make sure you're addressing them because they're trying to test you uh, with these legal implications if you're following them. Being that we're mandated reporters, how are you going to answer this question, right? Now, the social worker should, and again, immediate answer, what do I do first? Um, what am I doing here and now? Like the most immediate situation. You're reading all your choices. A, discuss the situation with a supervisor. B, recommend family therapy. C, report the suspected abuse. Or D, gather more information related to the mother-son relationship. Now, being that we have these red flags, let's get rid of things that are furthest from red flag answers, okay? So a bunch of them are furthest, for, far. <laughs> and here are four choices. So we want to, once again, eliminate two. If there's four choices, we're getting rid of two. If there's three choices, try to get rid of one so that you can get closer to the answer. Now, 
let's get rid of discuss the situation with the supervisor. Why? Because that's not a safe, well, it's not, I want to say it's not the safest answer because they want to know what you're going to do with this concern and the reporting. So if they're asking what you want to do, you don't want to ask someone else, right? It's like if you, I'll give you a little example. If you hire someone and you expect them to do something, you don't want them to keep asking everyone else, right? Um, so this exam is expecting you to know what to do. So if you're asking other professionals or your supervisor, they're going to assume that you're not really sure what you're doing, okay? Um, recommend family therapy. That wouldn't address my red flag either, right? Because I'm here suspecting something and I'm concerned about the suspicion and I'm concerned about if he's not going to trust me. That has nothing to do with family therapy, right? Now, I'm going to be between C and D. So I find between C and D, it's very easy. All you have to say is which one's going to match with my red flags and which one is going to be the first thing to do here and now. And it would be C. I'm going to report this suspected abuse. And can I match this with anything in the question? Remember, the words are there. And yeah, totally. The word suspect and the word suspect is here. You could match this perfectly and you know that C will be your answer. All right. Okay. And let's do number five. A client who is also a mental health practitioner, LMHC, asks her social worker, so she's in therapy with a social worker, um, if she would like to co-author an upcoming book she's currently writing. Okay. The social worker agrees to the writing commitment. This would be an example of, all right, so let's back it up a little and see what's going on here. The client's asking the, the, the uh, social worker and the client is also like a mental health practitioner to co-author a book, right? I mean, that sounds exciting, right? But um, the social worker agrees to this com writing uh, commitment. So over here is what you want to focus on because this has to really match your answer. All right. Um, because they're telling you here, this is the stem of the question, the question, and this is where your answer is going to lie. Basically, where your answer is going to match is a better word for it. OK, so so I'm teaching you like where to highlight. As you could see, normally it's pretty much this sentence right here and this sentence right here. You see that now this would be an example of so this is more of a definition right and you might get some questions like that but if you're not sure don't worry you know there's a lot of questions that you might not understand or know what they're talking about most likely that's how the exam feels you just want to use your skills that I'm teaching you strategies and that's really how you're going to pass your test with some information of course it's not like you can't you don't have to study anything but you want to make sure that you are um, answering the question that they're really asking. And you could do that by matching also. Now, you might have to know a little bit of information here, but do your best. All right, so let's eliminate two. Let's eliminate rationalization because rationalization is a defense mechanism, okay? That has to do with making excuses for some something that you wanna avoid like a feeling or something, right? And speaking of avoid, avoid, you can eliminate avoidance because avoidance is also a defense mechanism or a, just an um, a behavior that people avoid things that they don't want to do. So in this case, she's actually not avoiding, right? So you could definitely eliminate that. Now we're between B and C because these are actually closer to like ethical um, uh, things that are going on. So what would the social worker agreeing to write with her clients in a book? What would that be an example of? And it would be a dual relationship. Let's say you're not sure, right? Because if you're not sure, bartering actually means an exchange for uh, goods or services. So you, you might get confused like, oh, um, well, 
maybe they're trying to exchange the relation, you know, the relationship, but that's not the case here. So how would you match this? Like, okay, well, you taught me how to match up here. How would I match? Well, maybe the word relationship, the the word and dual two things, right? Two things. Not only are you my client, but now we're going to co-author a book together. So obviously, this is an unethical uh, way of practicing, right? And this will be called a dual relationship if they do that, which they they shouldn't. But if they do, it is called a dual relationship. And that's how you match it. All right. So that brings me to the conclusion of this video. I want to thank you for watching. Subscribe to this channel. Press like. Um, and look out for more because I'm going to be doing these short little quizzes for you. If they're helpful, press the like button. Um, if you have any questions, you could reach out to me. Like I said, here's my um contact information, right? And this was just a nice little practice so that you could see how to highlight, how to look for words, how to match, right? Important things. Even if you're not even sure what they're talking about, you can actually get a question right and correct by matching. Okay, so I want to thank you again for watching and I will see you next time. Bye bye.